this is the outer lobby of the theater, and the architects were faced with a uh, particularly challenging task. Originally, this is the site of what remained of the Sterling Hotel, and the theater was constructed beginning in, nine, <clears throat> excuse me, 1924, um, to attach to this remaining structure. The architects, since we were going to demolish this, had to come up with what would be the appropriate street front entrance. You see, theaters in, uh, in the days of vaudeville were designed to create an unreality, to take a person in successive stages from the reality out there on the street to the imaginary world uh, of the theater. And they did that through architecture. Our architects came up with this particular scheme to provide a grand entrance into the theater. Uh, we have a featured ticket booth over here where our patrons are able to uh, pick up their tickets, although at the time they were picking up tickets, now virtually all of our sales are online. We have a concession stand over here, and we have a coat check over here for our, our patrons to be uh, particularly comfortable. Again, on the floor we reflect the octagon, uh, which is the primary feature uh, inside the house. Well, this is the inner lobby of the uh, theater. Uh, this is a much more of a restoration process. It really looks remarkably like it did when the theater opened in uh, 1928. Uh, one change has been the full wall that now separates the lobby from the house in order to control sound. That originally was just a half wall and a curtain. There was also a concession stand located right in this particular area. But the decorative features that you see are pretty much the same. There originally were only four doors that led into the theater. Uh, there are now seven altogether that lead into the uh, uh, inner lobby. As I mentioned earlier, there used to be a rather narrow passage from the, um, uh, from the street uh, into the inner lobby. That's much broader and thus we have more access here. The lobby features some wonderful woodwork uh, above two staircases that lead to a mezzanine promenade. There are a variety of architectural uh, and decorative plaster elements, uh, the arches, those crown moldings that have scallops on them. And of course, uh, the upper area, we see the reappearance of the, of the griffins and the shields, uh, the motif that was used throughout. This particular shield and medallion up here, those are originals, but they were duplicated on the other side uh, in the area that leads into the Capitol Lounge. Uh, the carpeting is, again, the reflection uh, of the original. Well, we're in the mezzanine now, and in front of me are the stairs that lead to the loge and to the balcony. And over this railing, we overlook the uh, inner lobby. Uh, the, the mezzanine has a somewhat different decor in these crown moldings that have a, a sort of a, uh, an oceanic uh, uh, perspective uh, with uh, cockle shells and things like that. Particularly attractive uh, moldings. We can see these brackets which are used all over uh, the inner lobby. And as we look across the uh, inner lobby on the second floor, we can see through the windows to the Capitol Lounge and some of the decorative elements around. If we look up in the tray ceiling area, every one of those tiles was completely painted out. And as a part of the decorative arts uh, investigative process, uh, the true color palette was revealed and then of course duplicated as, uh, as part of the uh, renovation. Right from the beginning of the uh, renovation project and the new construction, we knew that we wanted to incorporate 
uh, a, a facility uh, that would allow our patrons to uh, have the opportunity to have a drink or meet friends or enhance the theatrical experience in that way. And we created what we then called the Patrons Lounge. And it was available for individuals who had made certain levels of contribution uh, to the capital campaign. And it operated in that somewhat exclusive manner uh, for a period of about 10 years. After which, we recognized that declining interest among those original donors and the opportunity to open it to all of our patrons. And so we rebranded it and called it uh, the Capital Lounge rather than the Patrons Lounge. And it's a wonderful place to meet friends um, before a particular uh, performance, during intermission, or after the show. Well, we're inside the theater now, and at the back of the orchestra section, uh, we have this area from which sound and lights are controlled. The technology in the theater world has advanced many, many iterations since we opened this place. Now virtually everything is done through computer controlled uh, programs to produce the quality of sound and the lighting effects that make a live performance in the theater uh, something really special. One of the more interesting stories of discovery concerns um, these seat standards. As you can see, they're really very elaborate, very uh, gaily decorated with fleur-de-lis and vase and fruit and all different colors. In 1936, a flood took out the entire orchestra area and all the seats were destroyed and replaced with a considerably less ornate uh, kind of uh, seating product. However, in the balcony, the original seats remained. Now, over the years, um, soil, dirt, grease, all of that sort of thing obscured the colors. We took one of these seats, as a matter of fact, I took one of the standards and took it home. And I noticed when I got it outside in, in, um, in sunlight that there were colors on it. We didn't even know they existed. Some really good uh, scrubbing and, and, um, and, and whatever. Uh, revealed this particular color palette. When the theater renovation uh, then was completed, the American Seating Company, which had provided the original seats, was able to take the uh, seat standards from the original uh, balcony area and replicate them for down here in, uh, uh, in the orchestra area. Uh, in the orchestra section, uh, we have a special area uh, where we recognize the major donors of, uh, to the capital campaign. Uh, we call this the Sterling Circle after the hotel that occupied this state. These seats are choice seats, obviously. There are five rows of them um, that are you know, center in the orchestra. Uh, they have a little bit more room. The seats are a little bit larger. And they're also a bit more decorated. These are premium seats for which we charge a premium price, and they were literally uh, doled out to the major donors uh, immediately after the capital campaign, many of whom still uh, retain seat ownership uh, of, uh, of these particular seats. From this position in the orchestra, you can see much of the decorative areas. Uh, on my right and left, uh, are the original organ chambers. Uh, the organ was actually uh, over in that particular direction. You see the stenciling uh, that surrounds uh, the organ chambers, goes above the proscenium, uh, surrounds the proscenium arch. Um, in addition, uh, we can look at, again, some of the decorative elements on what is supposed to be a small balcony. Uh, that particular area, again, the shields and the griffins that are part of uh, this decorative arts uh, package. Uh, but the, the, the major element of, of this theater uh, is the octagon. And as you can see, we have an octagon within an octagon within an octagon. It's replicated throughout. The shields uh, showing the heraldic uh, kinds of, of figures, the old man in the sea, the griffins, the various elements in the shields, uh, the, the crowns, uh, the entire perimeter of the octagon is all decorative plaster, 
uh, with large plaster acorns that are suspended uh, toward the audience. Uh, we can easily see uh, the murals on the side of the theater on the second floor, surrounded by columns and arches and again, faux uh, uh, balconies. Much of the stenciling that you see close to the stage, around the organ chamber, around the uh, proscenium arch, we were able to identify from an early photo in the theater. Um, but the stenciling that goes around the upper ceiling, the lower ceiling, underneath the balcony, in the back of the theater, we had no idea that, that, that this existed. And that all had to be discovered as part of the decorative arts investigative process and then replicated uh, in the original color palette. We ended up finding a whole lot more uh, stuff as we undertook our investigation. Originally, in front of the stage was a rather small orchestra pit. We decided that we wanted to do something unique as part of the uh, renovation. And so a substantial portion of the stage, uh, perhaps 12 to 15 feet deep from here, is actually an elevator. And it can be brought down to create an orchestra pit. It can be brought up to house level so that we can put additional seating or it can be brought up to this level in order to expand the stage. When it's at this level and expands the stage, it brings the artist out toward the audience a great deal more than if the stage is in the lower position. That creates an extraordinary intimacy uh, between the performer uh, and the audience. And I think it's a feature that both our patrons and the performers who come here uh, really find to be significant. Uh, I have the opportunity to tour lots of people uh, through the Community Arts Center and it's always a, a, a kind of a, a pleasure for me uh, to, to help them understand the history, uh, how this particular operation fits into the community, and what we feel are important contributions. But flat out, my favorite place to take them is on the stage and tell them, look at this, look how magnificent this is. There are so many historic theaters that have been lost uh, all across the country. Uh, it is a real credit to the people of Williamsport that we were able to rescue this one and provide the community resource that it does. And I don't think there is a spot in the theater that is better than right here on stage uh, to pre appreciate the scope of what this project means to the community. Well, we're in the Lodge, and I personally believe these are some of the better seats in the house, especially for a, a panoramic performance like Cats or River Dance, where there are things happening uh, all over the stage. In the Lodge and in the upper balcony, uh, the step design of the original theater uh, was maintained. So the seats uh, in this area are the same in number and position as they were when the theater opened. As I mentioned earlier, that's not the case downstairs since we did some shuffling to accommodate the wall, the sound and light projection booth. I like the loads too because it brings me close to the octagon and you can see quite clearly the decorative elements much better than you can from the house floor. And you also get uh, a wonderful view of the uh, murals on either side uh, of, of the theater. Again, the Pennsylvania uh, Susquehanna Valley mountainside. Uh, again, I think these particular seats are among uh, the best in the house, although perhaps I'm somewhat prejudiced. I don't think there's a bad seat in the house. Important to reflect on the many changes that we've made uh, to this facility. Uh, some of them driven by different means, changes in technology. Um, for example, the room in which we're seated now, uh, the, the Capitol Lounge, not only has a different name, but it has an entirely different decor than was originally designed. Uh, it, it's a much more uh, bright and open area as opposed to the rather clubby nature uh, of, of the original uh, um, construction. Uh, outside, uh, over the marquee, there's now a balcony 
uh, from which folks can be seated outside and have a drink uh, at the end over what we lovingly refer to uh, as the piano portion of the marquee uh, is a fire pit. The marquee overlooks a plaza area uh, that um, uh, has an outdoor performing stage that's used for various uh, uh, events uh, in the Williamsport area. Uh, inside, things are very different than they were in 1993 in terms of operations. I'd hate to go through how many technological changes have been made in theater performance technology, uh, such as sound and lights. Uh, we've had multiple iterations of new technology. What was once an electromechanical process is now completely computer driven. Uh, in 1993, we didn't have a website. Uh, when you came to the theater, you picked up your tickets. Now, you're probably getting your tickets online. You're more than likely showing them on your cell phone or a printed copy to the person who bar scans them as opposed to tears them in half. So we've made a lot of changes, seen a lot of growth over the 25 years. And while it's fun to reflect on the things that we accomplished in the opening in 1993, it's also kind of neat to look at how we've tried to keep pace with a, a changing world.